I think the main considerations come from uh, the triggers, the drivers, the mechanisms that actually lead to, lead to rebound effects. Much of the discussion comes from economic reasons, and they are very important because, yes, people make decisions based on, uh, on economic reasons. Uh, but also there are other mechanisms that will lead to, to rebound effects. And if we can uh, understand how these mechanisms, which are the, the triggers, uh, is it time, people have more time for maybe now purchase in a different way or buying online, you know, something that you will not uh, see uh, if you look only in terms of uh, money. Uh, this is a, a very important way uh, to, to actually find uh, the rebound effects. One important thing to consider about rebound effects is that depending on when you measure or estimate them, the estimation you get might be very different. So if we think of a car sharing scheme, for example, in the beginning of the scheme, the tendency is that the users are going to take more care of the cars, the car sharing company will take a little bit more time to start replacing the cars. So um, there is a chance that if you measure it in the first years of the operation of this scheme, you might really get a low number, a low estimation of the rebound effects of that scheme. Uh, but if you measure it in the long run and you look at the accumulated uh, effect of a, of a new car sharing scheme, for example, you might find a more uh, relevant magnitude of rebound. It's really important to be able to quantify the magnitude of rebound effects before we actually implement a new solution. And this is really key, because if we wait for the implementation to happen first, and then start trying to understand how to mitigate rebound effects, the impacts will be there already, and it might actually lead to a quite strong uh, disadvantage during the implementation. Um, the sooner we do it, the better, and ideally, even before you implement a new solution, so that the rebound effects will never, ever appear.